Hey guys, Nick here. Welcome to another edition of Front End Development for Ethereum. We're taking you through a journey of starting fresh right from the beginning and how do we build up and interact with the Ethereum blockchain on the front end. We're using vanilla JavaScript and HTML. We don't have any fancy frameworks. We're just using the Ethereum provider API that's injected into our browser from visual wallets like MetaMask. So why don't we dive in? So here I'm on Stack Starter. I'm just gonna go ahead and click build, take us into our editor here. And where we left off is we have a super simple application that enables us to connect to a given user's wallet, given their permission. And then we also have a small piece of functionality to check that said wallet's balance. So we go out there and we actually request the balance for the account and then we output it to the console. Really not much going on in terms of visual uh, visual output right now. There's not much UX, UI there. We have two buttons on the screen, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and run this application. We have this really simple um, Hello Web 3 with two buttons, connect wallet and check my balance. Super simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm just gonna go ahead and open up my console here because this is where we're gonna see most of our output. I'm gonna zoom in on this a little so we can see it. So. This application is basically going out there and connecting to a given user's wallet. Now we do have a problem. So in this video, what we wanna do is we wanna introduce you to the idea of events. And these are events as they pertain to the actual Ethereum provider API that is injected into the browser. So what is an event? An event basically is just some action that happens within say MetaMask and we want to be able to respond to that action and execute our own code. So say for example, if a user changes their account address, we want to be able to react to that action that happened within MetaMask or the digital wallet and then execute code where we can change the account that we're looking at. So just to illustrate that real quick, this application, we're just storing the accounts in this global variable up here called accounts, right? So we're when we enable the, when we call this enable ETH call, which happens from this on click event on the connect wallet button, we're going out and calling this ETH request accounts RPC call, which goes out there and prompts the user if they're not already connected to the application to connect to the application. And once that happens, we get an array of account addresses, which we can then use to perform other types of operations such as the ETH get balance call we do down here to get the balance. But if a user's account changes, say for example, we'll go to the application here and we refresh this. And I could just type this accounts here. So this is the first problem, right? When we first refresh the page, we don't have any accounts. It's, it's completely undefined. So if I go into my wallet here, um, we actually aren't connected to this application. So why don't we go ahead and click connect. Now this is gonna fire off that functionality that enables us to connect. And let's go ahead, now we're connected. Now boom, now that accounts is, we wrote it to the console here and we can see that we do have the account address. Now if I click check my balance, boom, we can see the balance and it is matching what is in the wallet. Awesome, this is going good so far. But let's go ahead and switch our account. So if I go here and go to my other account here. Now this account is not connected to this application. MetaMask will let you know that without clicking this button. So if I go ahead and click connect here, boom, that's gonna connect this wallet. But let's see, is our account address changed? It's not. And if I say check my balance, wait a second. I'm still looking at the other account balance. So if I go here and switch back and forth, that's not what we want, right? If a user switches their account, it should reorganize itself. The application should reorganize this accounts array so that it looks at the right account. So we can accomplish this by implementing and li really listening to certain events through the, the Ethereum provider API. So let's go ahead and take a look at the event we need to look at for this. So I'm going to go ahead and pop over to the MetaMask docs here. And you can see under the events section, it's pretty clearly outlined that we have this 
accounts changed event. And this account changed event is going to allow us to handle new accounts or when accounts actually change. So how would we actually implement this in this application? So we have this window.onload function. And what we should probably be doing here is maybe testing to see if we do have a window.ethereum object. And if we do, we could safely assume that we can access the uh, you know, web three. So this is probably something you probably want to do more towards the beginning in, in, in terms of qualifying the fact that the user actually has access to um, web three. So we can access web three. Up to this point, we've kind of just been assuming it's there, which is fine for just kind of learning these, these different calls. But now we're kind of testing it out. So we're saying, hey, if, if we have Ethereum, we can access Web3 else. We'd want to tell the user somehow that, hey, well, you're going to need to go ahead and install the digital wallet by MetaMask. <laughs> and we don't need that this that. Okay, awesome. So this conditional for us right now is gonna always resolve to true because we do have MetaMask installed. And in later videos, we're gonna probably go into some front end cleanup where we manipulate the DOM to hide and show buttons and things like that. But we're not quite there yet. So now what we can do within this conditional is we can listen for certain events and we can, we can register these event listeners. Now, before we do that, why don't we develop a function that is going to execute when the accounts actually change? And this is gonna be a function that'll just basically handle this, this account change. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna define another function. I'm gonna call it const and we'll say handle accounts changed. And I'll go ahead and we'll make that anonymous function like this, and it's going to be passed a parameter of accounts. So this is going to have the account. So let's go ahead and just console.log accounts changed, and we'll then console.log the actual accounts. Awesome. So now this isn't going to execute, right, because we're not calling it at all. So we now need to listen for the event we want to listen to and then call this function. So let's go ahead and do that up here in the window.onload function right after we tested for that window.ethereum object. So now we can say this.ethereum dot using this on method. This on method allows us to register for this event listener and then we're going to give it as its first parameter the event we're listening to, which is the accounts changed. And then the second parameter is going to be the function we want to call, the callback function, when the event actually fires. Just like that. So now when the account is changed, when this event fires, this method, or this function, I should say, is going to execute. Let's see what happens. So now, handle, oh, did I uh, put a typo in there? Handle accounts. Got to be careful there, right? So let's go ahead and see if we change our account. Nothing is happening. And if we say connect wallet, check balance, we're looking at that. Now if we go ahead and change the account, Nothing is happening. Interesting. Okay, so it's not actually calling the, because I put account instead of accounts. Look at that. So I missed S in both of these. So that's super important because, because the accounts, um, the return value here is a list of accounts. It's, it's an array, right? So it could be more than one. We need to pluralize that. So if we go here now and refresh this, and we do the same thing. Oh, there we go. So I'm glad stuff like that happens on video. And like, I, part of me wants to go back and be like, ah, let's just start this over again because I didn't put an S there. But 
that stuff happens, right? No matter how advanced you are, that stuff always happens. And I think it's important to illustrate that. So missing characters is always going to happen when you're doing this type of work. So now if we're flipping back and forth, you can see that the account is actually changing. So if I go here and now check my balance, oh, look at that. So it's not actually in the account variable yet, right? Because we said just console.log. So let's go ahead and instead of console.log, we want to say, and really we want to call this maybe not accounts just to make it so it's not matching the global variable we have and say accounts equals A, right? So now we're overriding that global accounts variable when the accounts change and now we should have the right account. So let's go here, if I quick check my balance now, it's still zero, but I have to switch the account. And that'll be the second problem here, right? So if we go here, account change, check my balance, boom, 99. Now, if we go here, switch, check my balance, switch the account, check my balance, 105. There we go. So now we're using these events to fire. We're listening for these events, and when they fire, we're changing the accounts that we're looking at, which is great. So that, that seems to be working good. Uh, but there still is a problem here. If I refresh this page, and I just go right to check my balance, ooh, it doesn't work. What the heck? So it's not automatically grabbing the account that's already connected to this application. So that's not good, right? We have to go ahead and click connect wallet. It's going to get it and then check my balance. And now it got it. Now it didn't prompt me to connect anything because this is already connected here, but it did have to go out and make that RPC call, this ETH request accounts RPC call. And being that we've already authorized the application, this did properly return the accounts array. Now we'd like to kind of you know, not have to do that, right? So we can just grab the account that's connected. And if it's already authorized, it's like you're, you're automatically kind of logged into the application and connected to it. So in order to do that, we do need to introduce another RPC call. And we can put it right after this event handler here, this right here. So we're gonna say window.ethereum and now here, we're gonna make a request. So we're gonna say request, just like we did with the other RPC calls. So hopefully you guys are seeing this kind of pattern start to emerge here, where it's, um, you know, the same kind of pattern over and over again, right? So we have this method, this object that we're gonna, this object literal, and we're gonna give it a method property. And the method here is going to be eth underscore accounts. And now what this is going to do is it's going to go ahead and request any accounts we have access to, right? So instead of making this async to, we'll make this a, a just a regular promise. So we're gonna say then, and in the then we're gonna handle the accounts changed. Now this is just like this event listener in some sense, because we're basically giving it a callback. We're saying when this method returns, which being that it's asynchronous, we don't know exactly when it's going to return, but when it does, we're going to call this handle accounts changed function. Now we also want to listen for any errors. So we could say dot catch. And here we can give it just a function like this, which again is just like a callback function. We're just implementing it right here and console.log error, just in case we get any errors back. Okay. Now let's go ahead and try to refresh this, which it should have already refreshed, but let's go ahead and refresh it manually. So you can see that right off the bat, when we refresh this page, the accounts changed function is being called. If we did not have that RPC call, that would not have happened. So now if I say check balance, boom, we have access to the account. So we have the accounts there already. Now, if I go ahead and change the, the address, that event is called. And now if I check balance, boom, we have the right balance. Awesome. 
So we're using the Ethereum provider API's event system to listen for when certain actions happen within the MetaMask wallet. In this case, specifically when we change an account. And then we're able to execute code in, inside of our application to change what accounts we're looking at when we make subsequent calls into, um, into Ethereum using the, the RPC methods. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's a little, it's a, it's a little bit raw, I guess. I had you know, a couple of mistakes there, but it's all good. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you're liking this type of content, please subscribe. Um, and you know, we're just trying to put out some content so we can all learn together with uh, so many things to learn in uh, in blockchain. So um, thanks, guys, for watching and um, trying to put these out weekly. So if um, if you're liking them, please let me know. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. Thanks, guys.